Hello, welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tip. Thank you for joining me this week. And today we're going to go back to our series on controllers. We're going to look inside this magic electronic box and then we're going to think about some of the improvements we're going to make to this controller. Now there seems to be a bit of a misconception around with electronic controllers. In fact, some of the clubs that I've been to, people think, oh, why are you using an electronic controller? Your car's gonna be so much faster, you must be boosting all the power. Well, no, that's not really true at all. In fact, most electronic controllers, everything inside them is designed to make the car go slower, not faster. Most electronic controllers also have an adjustable sensitivity, which allows you to drive all sorts of slot cars with one controller without having to go out and buy loads of different controllers all with different resistances. So although they might be a bit more expensive in the first place, it can actually be much more cost effective if you're racing all different types of slot car motor on different types of track. In a previous episode, I'll put a link on the screen now, we talked about the circuit for this electronic controller. Now today we're going to look inside this box and see what's in here. So let's open it up and take a closer look. So there's not very much inside this box. There's our three transistor connectors, our base and our emitter and our collector. There's actually a wire wound potentiometer in there and a switch. Now the switch and the potentiometer are for adjusting the brakes on the controller. I'll explain that in a moment. On the other side of the box is the transistor and quite a large hefty heat sink because this transistor can get quite hot when using more powerful motors and you're not driving them on full power all the time. So in the UK, the standard plug on most sockets uh, for a track in the UK is this five amp lighting plug. It's been used for many, many years in the UK. The reason why we used it is because it's not a mains plug, so you can't accidentally plug your controller into mains power in the wall in your house, in a socket in your house. It also, keeps the spacing of the pins all nice and neat and means that you can't really connect your controller wrong to the track. But in some other countries they've tended to use some other types of connections. There's the typical crocodile clip like this which I've seen uh, them use in America quite a bit and um, that basically clips onto some brass posts that stick out of the track. Again they're different coloured crocodile clips and you clip them onto the right coloured post on your track but that can lead to quite a disaster if you clip it the wrong way round. You can end up with controllers blowing up, exploding, no brakes, etc. Going flat out around your track, smashing your car to bits. It's really not the best of ways to connect your controller to the track. But it is dead easy and easy to wire up for a track owner. Also, the connection between the crocodile clip and the post is not great either. So in terms of conducting enough current through it, it isn't brilliant. The other method that a lot of tracks in Europe use, and I know some in the United States now use them, is these four millimeter banana plugs. They're really good. Again, you can plug them into a four millimeter socket on your track and you get quite good contact between them. They're a bit like the pins on the plug, to be fair. But again, you've just got to put them in and plug them in in the right order. So a lot of controllers now come with these and often come with an adapter with a UK plug or even adapters for crocodile connections, etc., for your local track. The owner of this controller is unlikely to use this controller abroad anywhere, so we're going to stick with the UK plug and the UK wiring onto this plug. The red, black and white colour coding of the wires is also a fairly standard thing across the world as well. I did go to Germany once and they were using some different colours. It did cause me a bit of an issue and I had to spend most of the night rebuilding my car, but Again, if you know some of the people that were with me, they'll probably tell you quite a funny story about that. But that was a bit of a disaster. Anyway, I got helped out by one of the locals who then remarked all my wires correctly uh, and I didn't have the same problem again. But as I say, the red, white uh, and black wires are quite standard now uh, across the world. So in order to explain some of the features of a controller and how we can modify it and improve it, you need to understand what these three wires do. Well, basically, the red wire is the brake wire, and that's constantly connected to the negative power supply. 
So the power supply that's powering your track, the brake wire is constantly connected to the negative of your power supply, or at least it should be if your track is wired correctly. The white wire is constantly connected to the live on this plug, and that is the positive of the power supply. So where you plug your controller in, we've got the brake connected to the negative of the power supply of your track. We've got the live connected to the positive of the power supply to your track, and that's the white wire. I know it doesn't quite look like it here, but it actually crosses over inside the plug. And the black wire is the wire that heads back out to the positive rail on your track, and that's how your controller works. Your controller basically decides how much power that's coming in from the white wire goes back out to your track through the black wire, and then obviously goes back to the negative of your power supply. So in very simple terms, all your squeezing of this trigger here does up to full power is reduce the amount of power that comes up through the white wire, goes up through your controller or through this little box here and comes back down through the black wire, goes out to your track and then back to the negative of the power supply. So that's all you're doing to control the speed of your car. Obviously different controllers work in different ways. They might control voltage, they might control current, they might even have a little bit of both. So they work in different ways, but that's the general principle of your slot car controller. So if your slot car controller is controlling the power coming in from the white wire and going back out through the black wire, what do we need the red wire for? What do the brakes do? Well, when you release your controller, what your controller does is it shorts out the black wire with the red wire. Now that obviously disconnects the power that's coming into your controller and shorts out these two connections. So why is that important? Well, so as the motor on your slot car is spinning, those coils of wire within the motor on the armature being energized lots of times per second. So when you actually come to brake, that energy that's in your slot car motor has to go somewhere. If you didn't have a brake wire, now the old scale electric controllers never used to have a third wire to them, they just had two wires, then that energy just slowly dissipates throughout the motor and it slowly slows down. Well, we can use that energy to stop the motor much more quickly by shorting out the motor. So instead of the current going through the coils the right way, by shorting out your brake wire and your, in effect, the negative wire to the positive wire that goes to the track, then by shorting those two out, you're connecting your motor actually in reverse. And that electricity that's built up, or electromotive force that's built up in the coils of wire in your armature, gets shorted out to the motor. In effect, the motor's trying to drive itself backwards so it, sh it stops really, really quickly. That's a very, very simple explanation. And to be honest, you probably don't really need to understand all of that. All you need to realize is that when your controller breaks and you go back onto the brake band, you're shorting out these two wires. And again, a direct short is the most brakes you can possibly have. So what this controller has is adjustable brakes. So it's got a switch to switch in this potentiometer, which in effect is a big resistor. And all this does is it changes the resistance of that short. So by putting more resistance in, you actually cause your motor to have less brakes because it will take longer for the motor to slow down because it's not a dead short. It would take longer for that energy within your motor to dissipate. So on this controller, let's flick the switch into the full brake position. You can see the angle of the switch is pointing across here and it's these two contacts, the top two contacts, the way I'm holding it now, that are connected to each other when the switch is in that position. So you can see the red wire for the brakes comes round to here, goes to the middle contact of the switch, and then the red wire comes straight out here, goes through to the red wire on the plug. So this potentiometer is not connected in the circuit at all. Your brakes are just a straight through connection through the switch back out. But the moment I switch it to variable brakes, it's now the middle connection is now not connected to anything. You can see there's no connection at all on the bottom of that switch. So the red wire that's coming in from the controller here goes to there. It then comes out through these smaller wires, goes through the potentiometer and then back out through this red wire. So this, so by switching it to variable or variable brakes down here, then we've got the ability to now adjust our potentiometer and change the amount of braking effect we will have on our slot car. Don't know whether you can just see it in the video, 
you can see that this is a 3 ohm potentiometer. Now that's quite reasonable if you just want uh, a little bit of adjustment on the brakes of your controller. You can always add more or less, but the person that's using this controller has been quite happy with the amount of brakes that they have got on their controller and the adjustability of their brakes. But we might be adding some special features about brakes to this controller in a later episode. So this 3 ohm potentiometer seems to work very well with BSCRA type cars. Um, the motors on these type of cars can draw anywhere between 1 amp and 20 amps and it seems to work okay at giving an adjustable range of brakes. I know there are some controllers out there that go up to 6 ohms of adjustment and that's possible because we could, have add, we could add an extra resistor into here but the more things we add in, the bigger the box, the more cost it's going to have to be. But this has worked very well for the owner of this controller so far. The current rating of this, again I'd recommend you get one with the highest current rating possible, um, but if your motors aren't really drawing that many amps, if, if one amp is the most your controller is ever going to draw, then a one amp brake pot will be perfectly suitable. Generally you tend to find that when braking the motors draw slightly less current at peak brakes than they do on peak acceleration, so you can get away with a potentiometer that's rated quite a bit less than a potentiometer that you might use under full power. It's not always about the amp rating as well, but this one's made quite nicely. You can see that there is a bit of a shunt wire here that goes from the wiper to the connector here on the edge. So you've got a good connection between the wiper and one of the terminals here. You can see that the wire wound parts are all potted really nicely in this compound they're all held in nicely and the actual action of it is nice and smooth as well it's not lumpy it's not horrible you know it is quite a smooth action and again the wiper itself sits quite nicely on the contacts you can see it started to wear a fraction on the leading edge where you're turning it round but again it's actually quite still a nice smooth action it's far from being worn out so quite a nicely made potentiometer. So at the start of my video, I said we'd also discuss some of the modifications we're going to be making to this controller. Well, we can make a number of modifications, assuming I can fit it all into this little box here. As we're talking about brakes, one of the things we could add to this controller could be what we call anti-brake. Now anti-brake is a fairly modern thing on controllers because certain types of motor have now becoming incredibly brakey. And the moment you lift off the controller, they almost stop dead, which can make the car really, really hard to drive. So what anti-brake does is in effect, it puts some power back into the motor so it doesn't totally short it out. It actually carries on driving the motor for a short period of time after you have braked with your controller. So when you come back on the brake like this, instead of it actually shorting out your motor, it actually applies a bit of power to the motor to keep the motor going very slowly, but obviously not as fast as it was when you were traveling around the track. So we could add some anti-brake, slightly more complicated thing to do that, but uh, I'll save that for maybe another couple of videos time. But that's one thing we could add to this controller. Another thing we could add is a full power relay. Now with this controller, the wiring's reasonable, it's not the thickest controller wiring I've ever seen. And the way this controller works, the power comes up through the white wire, comes all the way up, goes through the handle here, comes all the way up to the top, to the full power contact, so that when you reach the full power contact, you get the full power contact hitting here, coming all the way through there. And if I slip this other side off, you can see that it would come up through the wiper, make that connection on the board there, full power as well. So the full power connection on the board is also connected to this full power bit here with this yellow wire here. So you get some good connections. It then comes all the way back down through the wiper and through the black wire, which runs all the way back down to here. So at full power, the transistor is not actually doing anything, but the power has to come all the way up through the controller and all the way back down to the plug again. With a full power relay, we can make it so that when we actually hit the full power, the relay in the box here, which I think should fit into this bit here, joins the white and the black wire together down here inside the box, so that the power only has to come up this far, go through the relay and back down again. So in effect, you're getting perhaps a more efficient full power contact and you're losing 
uh, less power through the resistance of your wires um, at full power. So we could add a full power relay, so we'll get to that. The other thing we could add could be some resistive choke. Now, choke is perhaps not quite the right word, but we could add some resistors in series in between the white and the black wire so that when you are squeezing your trigger and you are actually on full power, if you didn't want the car to go quite as fast, a small resistance would slow down that whole feel of the motor. So it'd even slow it down sort of halfway through and at full power. Obviously, if we've got a full power relay, then that would bypass any extra resistance and so on we would have in the circuit. So we could add some what we call resistive choke into the circuit as well for when you're running really, really fast motors that you want to slow down a little bit. We could add a couple of resistors in series. So those are all the sort of things we're going to do and we're going to look at over the next few videos. If we're going to do all those things to the controller, we may very well need to add some cooling fans to it because it's going to get much hotter because all that energy that we're using up to make the car go slower has to go somewhere and that goes into heat. So we might also have to add some fans to cool this big heat sink down a bit because it could get rather hot with some powerful motors. Well, I appreciate we didn't actually do any work on the controller, but hopefully it gives you some more understanding of the kind of things that you might find on slot car controllers and how the basic principle works. And so next video, we'll get into making some modifications to the controller. So thank you for watching again, and I'll see you soon next time. Please subscribe, hit the big C, take a look at my other videos that are appearing on the screen, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.